you want that one turned around? <laughs> okay, guys, as a reminder, wait for the microphone. First question for Tyler. Jack? Tyler, first, have they uh, kind of told you what the plan's going to be for you this week, and, and how are you preparing for kind of what you might do the, the, in San Diego for three or four? Uh, you know, I think the plan's up in the air, and I'll tell you kind of what I told them. It's that whenever you want me to pitch, I'm available. If you want me to pitch tonight, I'm available. If you want me to pitch Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if you want to pitch tomorrow and live VP so guys can face some left-handed hit or pitching, I'll pitch then too. Um, so I don't really know exactly what the plan, plan's going to be, but I'm available whenever uh, they need me to pitch. Okay. You go in the back, Kirsten. Hey, Tyler, just what are you uh, watching, whether it was last night, tonight, kind of when you're looking at their hitters? Is there anything in specific that you're kind of taking in uh, while preparing for your outing? Um, you know, looking at some of that, but really I'm just trying to be there and, and enjoy the moment for our guys, you know, support our guys that are out there playing, uh, whether they're pitching on defense uh, or hitting, um, just just supporting them and, and paying attention to that. But, um, you know, watching, watching what their guys are doing, but I think things are going to change uh, as the series goes on as well. Down here on the left, first row. Hey, Tyler. Sorry about that. <laughs> Me? I'm, yep. Okay. Um, Kershaw gets the start tonight. What have you learned when Kershaw is pitching, especially now? What is, have you seen about him? Uh, you know, he's just hes a guy that it's so fun to watch pitch every night. He takes everything the same every day. Um, if you watch him today versus a start in the middle of May uh, or June, he's going to take everything exactly the same. Um, and there's just a lot to be learned about that and that professionalism. Um, so it's always just, you know, exciting to watch him go out there and do his thing. We're going to go far right, David. Tyler, uh, you were the last pitcher to uh, give into the PitchCom device. Just curious what your thoughts were when you saw Clevenger having issues and if you plan on using it in the postseason. Um, I would definitely use it in the, in the postseason. But yeah, the, the time that I did use it, I had the same issue that he had where um, sometimes they just don't work, where there's no sound. So I, I, you know, the, whole, the reason I kind of gave in late was that you don't want to go the whole year and rely on that, and then all of a sudden it's not working in a situation where you're hoping that it will um, for whatever reason. So it's always good to have a backup plan. But um, hopefully without any technology fails, that's going to be the way to go. Hope it Muncie's speaker works this time? Yeah, as long as somebody on the field works, you can always switch it out. You're okay. Next question. Bill, over there in the back. Yeah, Tyler, we've talked uh, a lot over the course of the year about your journey to kind of get to this point. And you haven't had a lot of postseason experience in your career. What does it mean when you, you know, assuming you take the mound as a starter in a postseason game for this team? Um, you know, it's just kind of like I said from the start, the whole reason uh, wanting to come to the Dodgers is be on a team that wins uh, and have a chance to be in the situation and be in the postseason. So it's just um, kind of just bearing that fruit for what you've hoped for all year and, and get a chance to go out and, you know, help our team try to do something to win. I'm going to go down here in the front row, Maria. Tyler, you talked about you'll be ready for whatever. How do you mentally prepare for whatever when so many guys want the routine? How do you just – how are you just ready anytime? Um you know, I just think that, you know, you never really know if you are, you want to be. Um, but I do think that, you know, being in the bullpen early on in the year helps me uh, kind of have a routine for both. So if you want me to pitch out of the pen, I'll come out of that. Or if you want me to start um, just, you know, taking care of your body and being, you know, available and fresh and ready to go. Way back, Jorge. Uh, Tyler, you've pitched against them four different times. Just wondering what's the chess ma match like at this point in the season when you've already faced them um, so much? Um, yeah, I think there's there's definitely some of that to it. You know, sometimes their approaches change uh, the more they see you and vice versa and just trying to stay ahead of um, what their approach might be and, and what guys are trying to do and kind of feel that out. But, uh, you know, fortunately, we have unbelievable catchers with both Barnes and uh, and Smith. So both those guys are so good that they're really good at feeling that out as well. So uh, it's just kind of, you know, a game planning thing in general. Anything else for Tyler? Yep. Okay, Tyler, thanks a lot. Sweet. Okay, guys, I'd like to open it up for questions for Will Smith. Please wait for the mic. First question. I'm going to go in the back to David. Will, you guys have been using the PitchCom device all season long. I know some of your pitchers have voiced some concern that as you got into the postseason, it may be difficult to hear, especially in hostile environments. Was there any issues last night or... Do you, do you guys have a backup plan in case that becomes an issue? Uh, yeah, there were no issues last night. You know, 
pitchers could hear. Um, you know, I just adjust my volume based on the crowd noise. Uh, so yeah, it was it worked well last night. Do you have a backup plan in case the pitcher can't hear it? Uh, yeah, we do. We have one in place. Mm -hmm. Next question. Right there in the middle. <coughs> uh, Will, uh, you played a little more this year than last year, and I know DH starts were a part of that, but it were, did that take any sort of physical toll on you, and did you do anything differently to sort of prepare for that or deal with that? Uh, no, I think, you know, last year I found a really good routine that works for me, uh, keeps me as fresh as, you know, I can be, uh, and I stuck with that this year. So, you know, right now my body feels, feels good, feels strong, and, uh, you know, ready for some more baseball here in the postseason. When you get rest uh, in between, like, you know, times <clears throat> catching, usually you, some teams give a full day off, but you're DHing in a lot of those games. Do, do you still find uh, you get the available, like, sort of rest you need in, in those cases? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think more importantly, it just keeps keeps my bat in the lineup and, uh, you know, keeps my timing and, and all that in check and uh, gets me a few, few more at-bats throughout the year. Okay, next question. Over there on the side on the right. <clears throat> I, well, I know the Padres want to think that the lineup has changed a lot. There have been a lot of different faces and everything, but from a guy that's actually trying to work through that lineup over the last couple of years, how much mm -hmm. of a difference do you see in the lineup now versus what Padres had earlier in the season and or last year? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely some new faces, but it's, you know, a lot of the same guys. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, they're, they're good hitters. They're a good lineup. They come with an approach every day. Um, so, you know, you gotta kind of got to figure that out on the fly. But, you know, we, we come with a good plan. Uh, we attack their weaknesses with our strengths and uh, go about it that way. Okay, next question down here in the front. Just wait for the mic. Here it comes. Will, with, uh, with the success that the bullpen is having, uh, what's it been like behind the plate catching those guys, working with those guys? Uh, it's, you know, it's been awesome. You know, they've, you know, some younger guys that have really developed into, you know, elite arms. Uh, and overall, you know, they, they do a really good job. You know, they shut down innings. Um, they get out of jams. And, uh, you know, they're, they're special guys. And, you know, it's fun to be a part of it and catch them. Okay. Anything else for Will? One more over here on the right. How much do some of the younger guys pick the brains of like the Clayton Kershaws and that type of stuff? I mean, does a lot of that go on? How much of it is just the game planning that you guys do with your analytics department? What, what's sort of the balance between that? I mean, yeah, they definitely, you know, talk to older guys. You know, there's always conversations going on uh, with pitching, with hitting, with, with everything. You know, that's just our clubhouse. Um, and I think, you know, we have a really good system in place that, you know, kind of fine tunes and and, and uh, develops their pitches and makes them a little better. And uh, we find out what plays in the game, and uh, you know that just that just promotes confidence in them. And you know, we set them up for success. Okay, follow up on the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So also, you got some great hitters in your clubhouse as well. How much interaction goes on between your pitchers and your hitters in terms of them learning from each other? You know, what they're looking for in certain situations or how they might work each other. Is there much of that type of back and forth as well? Yeah, there's, you know, there's conversations that go on. Um, you know, you talk more like situational stuff and, you know, how a pitcher might attack a hitter or what the hitter's approach might be in a certain situation. Uh, so, yeah, there's definitely, you know, communication going on and